This is Twit. All right. The pandemic and related closure of non-essential businesses is, of course, uh, causing havoc for, for all types of, of uh, businesses looking to keep the lights on. One such company is Elon Musk's Tesla. Late last week, Musk tweeted out uh, that the company would be filing a lawsuit against Alameda County, where its Fremont, California plant is located. And that was followed by a threat to leave the state altogether. At this point, I'm not entirely sure whether it's a threat or whether it's actually going to happen. But someone who might have some further details on that is joining us right now, Sam Abu El Samid, principal analyst at Guidehouse Insights and host of the Will Bearings podcast. Welcome back to the show, Sam. Hey, Jason and Micah, how are you guys doing today? Doing, doing well. awesome. That's a that's a swell ride behind you, by the way. <laughs> that's uh, that's an original Tesla Roadster. Oh, okay. Oh, clever. I had a chance nice. to uh, do a test drive of it. Uh, did a uh, first drive review of it for Autoblog back in January of 2008. And that is a collector's item. If one has has one of those uh, sitting in their garage at this point, or is it? It, it still certainly is. Yeah, they only built about 2,200 of them. Okay. Okay. All right. Then absolutely. <laughs> Uh, well, Sam, it's good to get you back. Um, let's talk a little bit about Elon Musk. I know you enjoy talking about Elon Musk. We've heard <laughs> we've heard your views on Tesla and Elon uh, many a times in the past on the show. Um, at, at up to this point, at least in you know in light of everything that's happening with the pandemic and everything, Musk has been pretty outspoken in criticizing the shelter in place uh, orders. What what exactly is his perspective there? Is it purely business oriented, like like this is going to hurt businesses and that's unnecessary? Is that the kind of the arc of his viewpoint? You know, it, it's always hard to tell for sure what Elon's rationale is with anything that he says. Um, you know, he'll he'll often say outrageous things and then come back later and say, oh, I was just kidding. But I mean, he's been pretty consistent throughout the last several months, uh, throughout the, the period of the pandemic of, you know, downplaying it, you know, basically following the same um, the same line of thinking as as Donald Trump, uh, you know, saying that it's it's not really very serious. You know, he at, at one point back in uh, late February, early March, he said by the end of April, we'll have no more cases in the U.S., you know, he said it was no worse than the flu, said that children were essentially immune to it, all of which was blatantly not true. Um, and so, you know, right now what's going on, you know, with these threats, you know, I think I think a big part of it was he absolutely did not want to shut down the factory. He, he's absolutely um, it's essential for Tesla that they keep that factory running, churning out cars that they can sell to generate revenue because, you know, they you know, if they shut down, you know, their revenue drops to zero and which is the same thing that every other car maker, every other major manufacturer has, has had a problem with over the last couple of months. So I think he really w needed to keep the keep the, the cash flow going. Yeah, I mean, that's what anyone who, who owns a business right now, that's one of the things they're concerned with. Of course, uh, many business owners are also concerned with people's health and ability to stay alive and the people that they love and all that kind of stuff. So it is a complicated situation, uh, no doubt about it. Now, he issued a threat to sue on Twitter. That was followed by a tweet where he stated that production would resume on Monday. He even said, if anyone is arrested, uh, I ask that it only be me. So really putting his money where his mouth is saying, I kind of don't care. We're starting up production and you can talk to me if you don't like it. Um, effectively, this is just a bargaining chip, though, because it kind of seems like that tactic has worked for him, right? Um, yeah, well, you know, for what it's worth, they actually did file a lawsuit against Alameda County uh, on Thurs Thursday night, Friday night. Uh, well, anyway, sometime late last week, they did uh, within a couple of hours after he posted that tweet, they actually did file a lawsuit um, okay. claiming that uh, the county was violating the company's constitutional rights and freedom of movement and all this sort of stuff. So, yeah, there you see it there. Um, and, you know, it's it's not, you know, the, the threat to move out of California is not totally without merit. I mean, he actually could do that, um, you know, within, you know, he they have. Tesla has operations. They've got the Gigafactory where they build batteries um, in Nevada near Reno. Um, and Tesla, or rather, uh, one of Elon's other companies, SpaceX, has a big operation in Texas now, uh, in Boca Chica, Texas, in South Texas, where they're uh, trying to build the prototypes of their next generation rocket and test those. Uh, so it's not inconceivable that Tesla could uh, relocate out of California. 
uh, at least its its headquarters operations. Moving the factory would be more problematic. You know, they could they could move the 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 headquarters from Palo Alto somewhere else, on a relatively quick timeline. Uh, mm -hmm. Moving manufacturing somewhere else would take a lot longer. It's probably at least um, a 12 to 24 month timeline to do that. You know, because they would have to basically take take all the equipment out of their factory. They'd have to have a new building set up somewhere else. They could do that in in Reno. Uh, where the Gigafactory is, they actually have a lot of space there, uh, and they could uh, they could put up another building there and and move their equipment there. But there would be a significant disruption in production while doing that, which you know is what what Elon's clearly trying to avoid with all of this fight back against the uh, against against the the shelter in place orders. You know, and at the beginning of this, you know, they they tried to claim that you know car manufacturing was an essential business you know they tried to use that as a loophole to avoid closing down but clearly you know it's not it's not essential um you know it's not it's not something that um needs to happen you know like food distribution and production you know those are essential businesses building high-end performance cars is not an essential business in this kind of situation and you know they they shut that down pretty quickly but um, so they, they could conceivably move uh, somewhere else. And, and that wouldn't necessarily be a matter of, bu of building a new factory. It would be taking a factory that they already have and moving it over still well, a long time. They, to make they, that would, they would have to build at least a new building. Um, you know, they don't I don't think they have space within the existing building that they have in Reno uh, to install all their assembly lines and everything and, and do that. So they would have to put up a new building. Uh, but they could move the existing equipment, uh, and they have plenty of land. They have they have more than enough land uh, in Reno. That facility is only about the third, uh, one third the size of what was originally planned, and so they have plenty of space to do it. They just they but they do have to put up some walls and a roof. Yeah, right, right. Now, um, bringing the employees back, you know, as as happened earlier this week. What kind of protections uh, are those employees uh, are given through through Tesla? Are they are they like how are they employing these these rules of social distancing and and how making the employees feel like they're returning to work and maybe they don't necessarily want to return to work. Maybe they side with the with the government and say, hey, I want to be safe. Are they being protected at least in some way while they're there? Yeah, this is something we don't know. Uh, Tesla has not given any details, and in fact, some of the stuff I've seen, uh, you know, that was issued by uh, Alameda County uh, Health Department the other day when they said that they were going to allow Tesla to go back uh, and start production again. They, you know, they were saying that you know Tesla has a plan to have a plan, uh, which whatever that means. <laughs> uh, you know, so we we Love don't that. know what they're doing. You know, whether they're issuing face masks or whether they've rearranged the assembly lines. You know, other car makers like Ford and General Motors and Honda and others. You know, they have they have actually published what their plans are, what they're doing. Uh, you know, uh, most of them you know have made changes in their in their workstations on the assembly lines to move people further apart. They are definitely giving. Um, masks to everybody uh, in the case of uh, Ford they're also giving them giving uh, people depending on the job they're giving them face shields uh, and Ford is also issuing uh, Bluetooth wristbands that were they got from uh, Samsung to all the workers on the assembly line uh, that will buzz it'll buzz your wrist anytime you get within six feet of another person uh, so they're not tracking where people are but they're just using that to alert people that hey you're too close to somebody else my guess is that Tesla is not doing much of that. Uh, Tesla has a long history of uh, workplace safety violations. They've been cited many times by the Occupational Health and Safety Administration for safety violations. Um, they've got they tend to have a lot more injuries in their factories, even under the best of times. So we don't have any idea what Tesla is actually going to do. Hmm. Yeah, and just just now you you alluded to um, there was a there was a medium post by Don Conroy, director of operations with Ford, uh, who posted about their kind of efforts that you were you were talking about a little bit of kind of returning to work. They've they've created what they call a return to work playbook. It involves a close collaboration with its partner Argo AI. What does that collaboration look like? Yeah, so this this part is, um, you know, they're starting up the factories again uh, next Monday. Uh, but uh, this particular post and also a related posting on the Argo AI website is about how 
they're uh, getting ready to get back to testing their automated vehicles back on the road again. You know, for the last couple of months, they've been relying on simulation testing, doing a lot of simulation work, but they haven't been doing any road testing of their vehicles. And so they've been putting together a plan, you know, working with the, the same teams that are preparing the factories to go back to work. Um, you know, following all the CDC guidelines. So uh, in the vehicles that Argo tests, um, what they've done is they've installed plastic barriers um, in between the, the, the right and left side of the vehicle um, to keep, because each vehicle has two safety operators inside, one whose job is to keep their hands by the wheel and be ready to take over if necessary when they're testing the autonomous system. And the, the other one is monitoring the data um, and checking what the sensors are seeing and everything. And so they want to keep those people separated. So everybody's getting masks. They're also getting those wristbands, um, installing plastic barriers. Uh, they've installed HEPA filters in the uh, the climate control system of all the test vehicles and also put, you know, that's for the incoming air through the air conditioning or heating system. Uh, but they've also installed five stage um, air filtration systems on in the in each of the vehicles on either side of the barrier that um, filter the in cabin air. So they're going through HEPA filters, um, UV um, ionization filters, um, and a couple of other things uh, to try to keep the air inside the, the vehicle as clean as possible. Um, and then also they've made changes in the way they're doing things at their at their terminals, you know, where the, when the vehicles come in after a shift, they've, they're staggering the shifts. They used to have the, t the, the day and afternoon shifts overlap um, in the middle of the day. They, they would come in at the same time and they would have a daily all hands meeting uh, to go over what's what's going on and the safety updates, things like that. They've now separated those two. So they're limiting the number of people that come into the garage, into the test facilities every day. Um, and uh, they've changed the workspace around. They're doing a deep cleaning on every vehicle when it comes in uh, after, after a drive shift. So they're doing a lot of things to try to um, uh, keep everybody as safe as possible. Uh, and uh, the other thing, uh, another company that's also doing testing of AVs is NVIDIA, the, the same company that makes all those fancy GPUs. They, they make chips that are used by a lot of the AV companies in their vehicles. And they do some testing of their own, you know, of their hardware and their software. And uh, they just today announced uh, as part of uh, Jensen Wang's uh, keynote, uh, their CEO, uh, for their virtual GTC, um, they announced a, a new software component for their stack called uh, DriveRC for remote control. And they originally developed this for doing teleoperation. So if, if somebody, if a remote operator needs to take control of an autom autonomous vehicle, um, if the vehicle doesn't know what to do, um, they can see, you know, they can stream the data from the sensors and they can see it and control the vehicle. Um, but what uh, NVIDIA is actually using this for internally is to allow social distancing between their two safety operators. So now instead of having two people in the vehicle, they have one. Um, whose job is just to watch the vehicle. And then the, the person who would normally sit in the, the right-hand seat watching the data is actually sitting at home and getting a live stream of that data in real time so they can monitor everything remotely. Hmm. Fascinating. And, and that last story that you were mentioning, the NVIDIA story, you, you did write about this. Uh, everybody should definitely check out your article at Forbes.com. Uh, Look for NVIDIA cranks up and turns down its drive AGX Orin uh, computers.